Hi everybody, Jennifer Blevins Smith with Integral Clinic Solutions, and you're watching my YouTube channel, Navigating the Business of Medicine. Today I want to talk about DME billing. That is durable medical equipment. D as in Delta, M as in Mike, E as in Echo. A lot of people in different specialties bill for DME. It is stuff that is considered reusable. It's medically necessary. It's gonna be used in the patient's home. It's gonna last a while, like it's gonna be needed to be reused for a while. There are some other criteria that qualifies things as DME, but a lot of people don't realize that in order to bill Medicare for DME, you have to have a separate PTAN number. So you get a PTAN when you become or a, when you become contracted with Medicare, they send you a letter with a PTAN number for your group and then you get one for your providers. Well, in order to bill for DEMI posts, which is what Medicare calls DME because it's durable medical equipment, prosthetics, orthotics, and supplies. So DME P O S. <laughs> so we call it DEMI posts or DME. And you have to uh, provide a separate PTAN in order to enroll and submit claims to Medicare to bill these supplies. So they go to a whole different place at Medicare. The claims get split. So if you put them on your claim for services rendered, such as your E&M and any kind of labs or whatever, you, also, you have to send a separate claim with just your DME stuff to a separate place at Medicare. And I'm sure your billing system will help you get that all situated, but you have to have a separate PTAN to enroll in that claim submission. You can't use your Medicare care just straight PTAN number. And this can be really confusing to people. But the straight Medicare Part B, as in boy, won't cover DME. It has to be separate. That's same for commercial insurances. They will cover DME, but you have to make sure that you're using the correct codes. You have to make sure that you're using the right diagnosis codes. And you also need to make sure that you're supporting the medical necessity. Depending on the guidelines for coverage for certain equipment, it might be something that they have to rent that they can't buy. It might be something that they have to buy, or it might be something that they get to choose whether they buy it or they rent it. Again, this includes crutches, wheelchairs, um, diabetic sugar testing uh, monitors, um, let's see here, splints, any kind of slings, those types of things. So if you're an urgent care, you're a pain management, you're primary care, depending on what you see, um, diabetic specialist, neurologist. I mean, there's so many specialties that bill out DME and it is just a little bit different. It has a little bit of its own um, requirements. It has its own codes. It has those types of situations. And for your specialty, you need to be aware of what insurances will and will not cover when it comes to DME for patients, because it might be cheaper or more affordable or better for you and the patient that they just pay cash for this, like orthotics, maybe like custom made orthotics, or maybe um, you need to give that patient a heads up of how much it's going to cost. And of course, it gets applied to deductibles, right? So if they haven't met their deductible, then they have to pay for it out of pocket. And then if they have met their deductible, then they only pay their coinsurance. So, I mean, it's not just because it's ordered by a doctor that it should be assumed that it's going to be covered at 100%. So that also puts things in a little bit of a different situation because I think patients have this misunderstanding that if the doctor orders these supplies, then it will be covered as opposed if they were to go to the store and buy a sling or a splint out of pocket. And it's just, you know, different ways to get there. Now, remember, if you're billing Medicare, chances are if Medicare does cover it, 
you can't bill the patient or have them pay cash unless you get an ABN form up front. And that's a whole nother story, a whole nother video that we would need to go over. But just be aware that you need to check your contracts with your payers about DME about billing. Hopefully you have someone in your practice who is very well versed in billing and coding for DME because that is only a benefit to you. Because this stuff is expensive. If you have to have some of this stuff in your office to provide to patients when they're seen, that's money out of your pocket up front with it hopes that it will be reimbursed down the road. And then of course there's other things that you put in orders and you know a home health supply will bring it to the patient or something like that. But like crutches and splints and slings and stuff that you need to provide to patients immediately in order for patients to feel comfortable or out of pain or stable or whatever, you need to have that in your office. So you really wanna make sure that you understand the billing for that so you don't lose any money. If you have any questions or comments about DME, I'm not gonna lie, I am not that strong at billing for DME. I just know the very high level overview that I'm providing to you today. But maybe someone else who is reading this or watching this would be able to provide some more feedback for you. So please don't hesitate to leave that in the comments below. Smash that thumbs up button if today's video is helpful because it does help with that YouTube algorithm and I see my channel growing and it's just so exciting to me. So please help me out on that. Smash that thumbs up button. Of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and we will see you next time. Take care of yourself. Thank you so much again. Bye-bye.